welcome back to my channel. I'm Jess from Bahati Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are going to be talking about the Cancer Eclipse, which is going to be happening on July 12th. And what I, oh my God, it's 333. Love that. Love that. I love those little signs of synchronicities. And that's crazy because I just was talking about the number 333 and manifestation and abundance and receiving and fertility and empress vibes and hashtag goddess vibes. So it's funny. And it's 333. The level of confirmation lately has been through the roof. But that being said, let's go ahead and dive into this new moon in Cancer, um, this eclipse. So what I have is July 12th, 2018 at 840. The crazy thing is I saw on the internet that they were saying that it was around 740, 749. And I pulled the chart and I did not... I did not see that, I didn't see it exact at that time. So I have it roughly around 8.40 p.m. You guys know I have the chart. Um, I pull it myself. I really don't reference other outside sources for my information and my details for any type of video that I make about astrology or, intu or intuition. I always follow my own guidance, my own, what I see and what I feel and the knowledge that I have. And that's what I share with you guys. I don't like going to external stuff. Not because I'm hating on them, but because um, I don't want my vision and my perspective to get bled. Like I don't want other people's opinions to bleed into my own opinion. But that being said, um, I did make some notes because there's some things that really do stand out. So this eclipse in general, it's a new moon. It's super powerful. It's super potent. Number one, because a few days before that, actually on the day that I'm filming, Jupiter, the planet of abundance and expansion has finally gone direct. I did make a video about that. So you can go ahead and check the links for that down below and get the details for that. But um, Jupiter is a planet of abundance and when it's been sitting dormant with the majority of these planets, the major planets retrograde, what has been happening is it's almost like the planets have been storing up their energy in order to prepare and to provide. So the metaphor that I used during our live chat, during our live chat astro chat party, I said that it's like these gurus, like the planets are gurus and they say to you as you go to them and you ask them for help and you say, look, this is what I need in my life. And the planets say, okay, that's great. Let me go ahead and check my resources. Let me go ahead and make this spell for you. Let me go ahead and do what I can do. And then I'll provide for you at the right time at the right moment. So that's how you want to look at these retrograde planets is they are Re re they're referencing their sources in order to provide for you at the right moment at the right time meanwhile when you're when it's retrograde all that energy goes internal and that's what it is that i'm seeing for this new moon eclipse i'm seeing internal energy a focus on the internal so cancer across the board whether you're no matter what your astrological sign is cancer rules something within your chart um and cancer also brings a really important level of energy to you in this moment. I don't care if you're a Leo, I don't care if you're an Aries, I don't care if you're an actual Cancer. You may have an important Cancer placement within your chart that you're about to receive the benefit and the blessing of this eclipse. And this eclipse truly is so freaking powerful. It really is. If you look at the chart, there's this huge, um, there's two trines within the, within the skies. And what happens with the trine is that this energy of effortless, um, manifestation and movement kind of opens the gate up. Now, if you are an old um, tribe member, then you know that I've been saying that this uh, energy of this gate kind of opening up has been happening for a while, starting last week, and now we're starting to see the results. So what I see is this gate opening up, this portal open, opening. And it's like a key. It's a key to the secret garden. And again, it's something that is pulled back. It's something that has been lying dormant. It's something that you may have set the intention for. It's something that you may have had the vision for, but it's not in public eye for a lot. For that, that's what the vibe that it is that I'm getting. The other thing that I see is that it's this internal change, an internal shift. And the reason why this is, um, is because cancer is very much 
about feeling and emotion and intuition and it's super receptive receptive to picking up on the energy in its environment and it reacts based upon that and it reacts strongly and powerfully based upon its feeling so what i see is a connection to your intuition i see a connected a connection to the soul i see a connection to the things that it is that you desire and that you want for yourself that are truly important not superficial level truly truly important and jupiter now that it's going direct or now that it is direct in a sign of scorpio scorpio connects to your purpose and think and and passion and like the deepest darkest desires that lie within you and jupiter pulls that out and it grows it and makes it aware then we have this eclipse that says okay now that we're aware now that this can happen i'm going to push the doors open so that the water and the gate the, the gates can swing open and the water and the blessings can flow through it's like a dam breaking and the water just saying like you ready grab your canoes we're going to start we, we have to paddle hard so that's the first thing that it is that I see. The next thing that it is that I see is the fact that um, Venus, the planet of love, beauty, attraction, is just recently moved into the sign of Virgo, which is very, very practical and also very sensitive. Venus is trying Saturn. Saturn is currently retrograde. This is not a bad thing. I don't. I know that the internet is going to take the fact that Saturn is retrograde and say that this is bad. Um, in reality, what Saturn is doing is it's still working to restructure and rebuild what it wants for you to have in the future. And it's still supporting Venus so well. Technically, Venus moving through Virgo is not her most comfortable. But what I see here is an emphasis on the energy of self-worth, self-value, self-love, and your ability to receive. When Venus is moving through the sign of Virgo, the first thing that it is that I'm seeing is a, a questioning of your worth and a questioning of, do I deserve this? And Saturn sitting in retrograde in the sign of Capricorn, directly opposite of this a uh, new moon eclipse is saying yes you're worthy and i want to not only remind you of your worth but i want to position you and put you in a place where you're able to receive all of the blessings that it is that you want for yourself but that you'll be able to care care for it and tend to it and build upon it as we move forward so the other thing that i see because there's so much going on in this chart i'm not kidding is the fact that venus is also being trined uranus uranus is a planet of surprise and unexpected developments and innovation it wants you to do differently and uranus is sitting in the sign of taurus taurus naturally rules venus so all of these elements are connected it's earth earth and earth so earth energy being triggered by emotion so grounding things that are are concrete things that are stable things that we we want to build a firm foundation for for not just in this moment for the future to come so do you see how the importance of you setting your intention of you working your magic of you knowing what you want and also the blessing of what's to come into your life it doesn't benefit you just now in this moment it benefits you forever and that's why the universe is like okay we need to tweak this we need to adjust this we need to push this out of your life in order for you to be able to bring this in saturn wants you to think about long term pluto wants you to transform so that you're ready the two of them are working really really powerfully and strongly together they're working in cahoots in order to make sure that you are learning the most as fast as you can so it really requires you to be flexible a level of flexibility is very important for this new moon eclipse traditionally because the eclipses just kind of bring in a lot of energy in a small amount of time and that and even in that small amount of time what happens impacts you for like six months to come and then can be triggered even further than that the other thing that I see is that the action that occurs during the eclipse can impact um, the direction and the course of your life and that impacts your entire life so it's very very important it's very powerful what I say and what I've been saying is to to really take some time out for yourself with the new moon and with eclipses in general new moons I really really recommend people being quiet and taking some time in their sacred space in order to let the water kind of settle in order for it to be quiet and still so that you are able to see what is ahead new moons do kind of trigger the energy of following the new moon triggers like sequences of events 
Definitely so, even more so when it's an eclipse. So what I want you guys to do is to take that time, the night of the eclipse, which is June 12th, 2018, um, Eastern Standard Time, around 8.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I want you guys to take that time to go into your sacred space. Very much focus on your intuition, your feelings, and your sensitivities. Do not limit yourself when it comes to thinking about the, the deepest desires of your heart. Remember, Jupiter, the planet of abundance and expansion and growth, is currently sitting in the sign of Scorpio, which is all about deeper level of connection, deeper level of intimacy, and things that are actually of worth worth worthwhile and value. It doesn't want anything that is not meaningful. Scorpio is all about I want like things that are pat that you're going to be passionate about, things that you want so hard. And what you need to know and what you need to feel is your soul speaking to you, telling you that you logically may not understand why you want something so bad. You logically may second guess it, but your soul, your spirit, your intuition is telling you that there's something there for you. And if you don't speak it, and if you don't um, like believe in yourself and um, respect yourself enough to ask for the desires of your heart, then you'll never be able to receive it. And the universe will just coast by because you missed that opportunity. So the least, the least that you can do is at least set the intention, write it down, do a ritual, whatever it is, put a prayer out there, whatever it is that you need to do in order to make um, in order to work with the energy that's happening around you, I don't want you guys to miss the boat on this eclipse because it truly, truly is powerful. The other thing that I think that I'm seeing is the fact that Chiron, the wounded healer, is sitting in the sign of Aries, currently retrograde, is going to be getting squared by Saturn. Now, to me, as I see this, and I am realizing how sensitive and emotional um, cancer is and the energy of cancer is it really does bring your emotions up for many of you You might be triggered during your ritual process or throughout this process Remember how I said before that Venus moving through the sign of Virgo It doesn't always suggest issues of self-worth and self-value But that's the first thing that's really standing out to me intuitively which it's it's like it almost is like Venus, the energy of Venus is very timid and I'm seeing and what I'm hearing for a lot of you is you even in your own personal lives and you can't help it but you're questioning your own self-worth or you're making decisions based upon a lower self awareness or lower self-love not even realizing that that is what it is that you're doing so again the universe wants to kind of break you out of that and Saturn is all about teaching you lessons and life lessons. Saturn is all about making you responsible and holding you accountable for your actions, not in a way to punish you, but in a way to make you grow. So when Saturn comes in and is squaring Chiron, it can be a little rough around the edges. It can feel a little abrasive, but just ride with those feelings, journal them, get them out. I did a full ritual that I wrote for horoscope.com that I will link down below as soon as they publish that article so that you can use to reference um, this spell and this ritual that I created for those that need to focus on self-love and beauty and it's technically a glamour magic spell but I feel like it can really benefit people to not only attract love into their lives but for you to acknowledge and recognize your own self-worth, your own light, your own love, your own beauty and infuse that into your everyday. So I definitely see that. Um, there is this energy that I've been seeing about um, knowing your worth and I'm also seeing the action that you take is being triggered and I'm looking down at my phone because I have the chart pulled up on my phone, shout out to astro.com, um, but what I see is the action that you take, it's, it's almost like being very quiet, very still and I don't want to say thoughtful but just watching what shows up. So what I, the image that I get is kind of maybe floating in the ocean is not the right word but it's just allowing yourself to kind of you know float for a second in that moment the night of the eclipse and the days around it or at least when you're doing this ri ritual or the sacred time and you're just kind of floating and just be aware and observant of what comes in what you hear what you see what you feel and then and you don't have to act on it right away unless you feel called to act on it, but write it down and at least capture it. Because what's happening is you're getting signs and signals of things that are going to help you. Kind of like little landmarks and little things, little signs that you need to look out for that will help to point the way um, and will trigger you in the moment when you get to that point. 
The last thing that I want to talk about with this, as far as I know, because you guys know that intuitive messages can hit at any point, is the fact that the sun is sitting directly opposite Pluto. The sun or the moon is sitting directly opposite Pluto because sun and moon are conjunct. That's obviously what the new moon is. Um, and what I see with this is um, almost like pe people who kind of second guess you or an act as a barrier, a wall, and want to stop you dead in your tracks. But again, this is like ego. This is the ego fighting through and saying, um, and not ego in a bad way, but you just knowing your self-worth and what it is that you want because you took that time out to to sit and hear and listen and see what is actually there for you. So because you know and because you heard that sign and because you know what is to come, you feel it. And if you don't, if you're not hearing it clearly, then listen to your feelings. Listen to the desires of your heart because you know what it is that you want. Not only do you know it, but Neptune, the planet of illusion and fantasy, but also Neptune sitting in the sign of Pisces has been raising a lot of people's vibration, most people's vibration, and people are becoming more sensitive to things in their environment, things that they simply will not allow, whether it be music, whether it be their energy, their vibes. We're seeing a shift in the spiritual community world with more people kind of gravitating towards new age and or finding ne next level in their spiritual practice and their relationships and the way that they take care of their take care of themselves because Neptune is moving through the sign of Pisces and raising that vibration so um, Neptune is aspecting the moon positively Neptune is aspecting the Sun and this raises the vibration of both of those planets and the energy of this eclipse which says listen to your intuition listen to your feelings so what I if I were you what I would do is work with dream work I would work with meditation and I would work with in intuition and intention around the energy of the eclipse in order to maximize the benefit of it. Now, for those of you guys that ask specifically, okay, Jess, what exactly am I gonna see with these, with this eclipse? What doors specifically are going to open up for me because with the sun falling in the sign of cancer, this is my sun sign, this is my moon. I can't answer that for you and I'm not gonna lie and pretend like I am in order to appease your hunger. The only way to answer that accurately, and you guys know I'm a perfectionist and I will never lie to you and I will never sell to you a lie I will never tell you half truth the only 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 way that we can astrologers can do that is by actually pulling your chart no I'm not trying to sell my wares if you want to work with me then you're more than welcome to but the only way for an astrologer to actually see what is going to open up within your chart is by in within your life is by pulling your chart because there's certain houses that are aspected there's certain planets that are placed in certain areas and sometimes even though you don't have any, um, even though you may not have any planets in the sign of Cancer, the, the new moon itself can trigger your personal planet and open up a portal even though you're a fire sign, even though you're an earth sign or an air sign, you'd be surprised how much people swear that, oh, I'm an, an Aquarius and I don't vibe well with Cancer, so Cancer's energy is not gonna impact me and then BAM! New job opportunity! Hits you right dead in the face! soulmate comes in sweeps you dead off your feet <laughs> why because your vertex is sitting in that that perfect point your Jupiter was being aspected your Pluto was being aspected your moon was being aspected and you didn't even know why because you didn't check your chart okay so I hope that this all makes sense definitely comment down below this is a tribe a family of astro loving wonderful people and I read all of the comments, I respond to as many as I can, but when you share your stories, it not only helps you to get it off of your chest, but it helps your tribe, it helps other people to share their stories and to act as confirmation, um, to encourage them in their own manifestation, to encourage them along their journey. Who else can you talk to about these things anyways? And of course, I respond to as many as I can, as honestly and authentically as I can, of course. Um, so, and this is a part of our tribe. The more that you're engaged, the more that you get out of it, the more that you benefit from it. So go ahead and feel, the, feel free to comment below your experiences and where cancer falls within your chart. If you're excited, if you're not excited, how you're feeling, what your dog's name is, what you ate for breakfast. I don't care. I want to hear it. Okay, so I'll see you in my next video. I love you. Bye.